Welcome to this afternoon session. Uh, the session that we are doing this afternoon to uh, keep in touch with what we have promised that uh, we will do um, about uh, seven sessions today. This is our afternoon session that we promised that by lunchtime we'll come back and, uh, and uh, teach on, on, on some um, concepts. And then after doing this teaching, we will break uh, for the evening. Uh, and then uh, this is uh, day seven of seven. I just want to remind you that we are in day seven of seven. We started on Monday this online Passover conference. And uh, before that, we, we have been um, involved in other number of teachings. So today we conclude what we started um, on Monday. And uh, we want to take this time and opportunity to welcome you all you know, to today's sh sharing, to today's teaching that we teach uh, the word of the Lord together and, and we just uh, you know, receive that which we are receiving from the Lord. So welcome to all of you who are joining this afternoon. I have three sessions to do now. Then uh, when I'm done with um, this um, afternoon session, uh, we'll rest for the evening, closing two sessions. So this afternoon, the sessions for this afternoon are going to be basically more to do with teaching. We will be teaching about uh, issues of giving. We'll be talking about giving for three, service, three sessions. So I've got about, um, um, I'll, I'll see how we'll divide them, but in terms of how they will go and flow, We'll take it as, as, as they flow. So we'll do three sessions uh, that we'll be teaching on giving. We'll be teaching on giving. So I just want to prepare you to know that the next three sessions that are coming, I'll be teaching about giving. I wrote two books. Uh, by the grace of God, I've written about um, 17 books. Uh, 17 books and uh, two of them. Uh, there's one that is called Apostolic Perspectives on Money. It deals with money. Then the other one is called Apostolic Perspective on um, Giving. So one addresses money, one addresses giving. So this afternoon, I will also share to you, uh, you know, what to give and where to give. We'll talk about what to give because giving has been made a money issue and giving is not, is not mainly a money issue. There are so many things that we can give other than money. So we, 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 a number of times we don't like to hear about giving because we have relegated giving and make it and then limit it only to money. So when I don't have money, I feel that there is nothing I can give, there's nothing I can offer, and that's not true. So we're going to deal with these issues and we're going to look at what must you give. Uh, if giving is not limited to money, what are other things that you can give and uh, where to give these things? Because in giving, uh, the what matters, the what, what you give matters, and where you give what you're giving matters. I want to say that again. In giving, what we give matters. And where we give it matters. That's, that's, that, that, that's what, what one of the sessions will touch about that. But the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation deals with, you know, giving. The whole Bible is about giving. The whole Bible is about receiving and giving. God gives us Jesus Christ, we receive him. God gives love, we receive the love. God gives forgiveness, we receive. God gives us the Passover lamb, we receive. We give praises to God, he receives them. So, our interaction and relationship with God uh, is, is, is centered in, in, you know, in, in the, the dimension and dynamics of giving. So, there is no way you can talk about Passover and neglect the issue of giving. Because right just about what we're talking about when we talk about the Passover lamb, we are looking at a God who gave his own only begotten son, John 3, 16. So that by itself, the moment you read that, you know God is about giving. God is the greatest giver of all the time. God is the greatest giver of all the time. And nobody can give better than God. Than God. No one can give better than God. He, if we want to learn about giving, let us study God. If we want to learn about giving, let us study Jesus. You will get best giving lessons you can ever get from anywhere. It's okay to study books. It's okay to study, you know, a number of things and so on and so forth. But if you want to know more about giving, study Jesus. 
So if you want to know more about giving, even the very Passover that we're talking about, the Passover lamb, you know, it, 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 it is centered, this whole Passover concept is centered around giving. So let's make sure that, you know, when we need to be accurate in our understanding with regard to giving, we study Christ. Christ is the patent son. Christ is our Passover. So let's look at these, uh, you know, you know, issues of giving in the context of scripture. I mean, within the parameters of scripture and uh, studying Christ and, and studying who he is to us and what he has done to us. Basically, what God has done to us is also an element of, you know, of, of the, his manifesting his other side of being a giving God. So when you study the Lord, you must also know that, you know, there is a side of him wherein he is a giving God. So you cannot separate giving from God. You cannot separate receiving from God. Unfortunate, we have so many other things that is muddied, you know, the concept of giving. So giving now become, you know, a, you know, you know, a more, it, it becomes more about money and we lose the whole essence of giving. So let's study giving from as, as kingdom people. Let us study it, you know, from the concept of, of, of the scriptures. What does the Bible say about giving? What does the Bible say about giving? The first thing that I also want to say before I, I, I go further uh, in teaching this, this, this issue, because we've got three sessions, so I'm going to take it very slow, and then we build up the pace as we go. The, 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 the number two element that I want to highlight here is that there are, there are fraudsters and people who are defrauding people using the Bible and, and, and forcing people to give them things, you know, you know, hiding with the Bible, hiding their, their fraudsters and the defrauding factors in them using scriptures. Now, giving out of being properly taught scriptures and being taught, properly taught what the Bible say is different from being defrauded. I want to say that again. Giving out of, you know, you know the, the, the sound teachings of scriptures is different and should not be confused as giving that is done out of, you know, being forced and man-made philosophies and man-made gimmicks that are designed to search your pockets and to, you know, defraud you and take things away from you. It's very, very different. Very, 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 very different. So the two are not the same. The two are not the same. So let's not confuse teachings that are aiming at opening our eyes and, and, and enlightening us with regard to issues of giving with teachings that are with intentions of defrauding God's people. People. There are fraud stars who are defrauding God's people using the concept of giving in that they intend to enrich themselves. Then there are teachers of God's word who teach about giving in order to bring insight, in order to bring illumination, in order to bring insight, in order to bring wisdom, in order to bring revelation, to open our eyes and discover the biblical perspectives about giving. So the two are not the same. So I needed to highlight that before we go far. So welcome to this session going to sit around and learn and teach and then we 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 um we share what we need to share i want you to invite your friends those that are closer you can take them you can share the teaching we also have the audios that will be available after this so you 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 are very 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 much welcome my friends let's sit back enjoy the word of god together and learn from the scriptures so the the, the first thing that we're going to do now we're going to read scriptures we're going to read scriptures because we are teaching these from scriptures. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 3. That's what we're reading from. And uh, scriptures say, And though, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 verse 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, And though I give my body to be burned, But have not love, it profits me nothing. Even if I can give all of my goods and, you know, give away every piece of goods that I have to feed the poor. If I don't have love, this giving that I'm doing, which might look very good in front of everybody. If I don't have love, my giving means nothing. Now, if I give my body to be burned, but I don't have love, it profits me nothing. 
In other words, activities that are done that seems to be good in front of the eyes of God's people. Activities that are done, activities that are done in our own eyes, in our own eyes, in our own eyes to 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 to, to you know to, to to do or to achieve a particular agenda. If I give anything and and participate in any exercise that I I, I engage myself in that exercise, but you find that the person who is engaging himself or herself in that giving exercise, if they don't have love. That giving means nothing. That giving means nothing. Now, now here is what we are going to open our sessions this afternoon with. The law of giving is love. The law of giving is love, and the law of love is giving. In other words, in other words, in other words, this is very, very important for us to establish as we are beginning. Now, any act of giving without love means nothing or it's just a barren exercise now if i give something and when 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 i'm giving something i don't have love in me and my giving is in the absence of love my ex my exercise of giving is purely meaningless purely meaningless so do not make any act of giving outside love in other words any act of giving without love has no value before the eyes of the Lord. So God attaches value to the giving that happens in the environment of love or outside the heart full of love. In other words, very, very important, very, very important. Genuine love gives. Genuine love gives. And genuine genuine giving has love written all over it. I want to I wanna establish these elements and then we, we, we continue to build. We've got about three sessions to do this and and, and, and let's hang in, let's hang around together, and then we'll, we'll, we'll build this together. Now, genuine love gives, and genuine giving has love written all over it. In other words, if, if I am giving anything, if I am giving you the Passover lamb, and I don't have love, my giving means nothing. That's what the Bible says, that for God loved. So, 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 before the giving can happen, there must be an, an environment of love. There must be a loving heart because when there is a loving heart, giving becomes easier. It is difficult to give when we don't have love. It is difficult to give when we are operating outside the environment of love. Any exercise that we will do when we are not a people full of love, our giving exercises means nothing. Our giving exercises means nothing. So very critical and very, 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 very important for us to capture and understand this is a basic is a basic principle the law of giving is love and the law of love is giving in other words you cannot separate the two whenever there is love there will be giving whenever there is giving there must be love very important very important don't separate these two components together love and giving must be married Love and giving must be married. Hear me well. Now, the proof of your love is logged in what you give. The proof of your love is logged in what you give. Now, when you love something and someone, we will see by the kind of things you give towards that something and someone. The proof of my love to my family is the kind of things I give to my family. The proof of your love for God is not in the words. The proof of your love for God is in what you give to that God. And we're going to talk about what must we give because giving must not just be limited to money. What must we give? We'll talk about that in the coming session. For now, let's establish the law of giving and, and the, 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 the law of love. So the proof of your love is giving. Now, you might find it very easy to say to people that you love them. You might find it very easy to say to people, I love you and you know, I love you by the love of the Lord and so on. These are good statements to utter. But when, when, when love is going to be tested, love is not going to be tested out of the words. Love will be tested by what it gives. Love will be tested out of what it gives. The love of God is seen in the Passover lamb he gave us. The love of God is seen out of the Passover lamb he gave us. Now your love to the people you say you love will be seen by the time you give them. Will be seen by the tangibles you give them. Will be seen by the support you give them. Will be seen by, by material things you will give them. Will be seen by the sympathy you give them. You know, So there are a number of things 
things that we are going to look at and discuss because you, you, you cannot separate these two. Your proof of love for someone and something is hidden in what you give to that someone or that thing. Your proof of love, as a Jacob, the proof that you love Joseph, the proof that you love Joseph is what you give to a Joseph. Now, Jacob made a coat of many colors and give that to Joseph as a token of, as a token of favor and love that he has over Joseph. So, the proof of your love as Jacob, the proof of Jacob's love was the coat of many colors that he gave to Joseph, that he made to Joseph. When love is present, giving will be easier. When there is no love in our hearts, giving will be a difficult exercise. All genuine givers are lovers. All genuine givers are the people full of love. Now, when you are a Jacob, in order to manifest and show your love for Joseph, you will have to do that through the coat of many colors. So, what you give reveals the love you have. What you give reveals the people you favor. What you give is very, very important. What you give manifests and reveals your love. Now, number two, number two, number two, number two. The proof that you have overcome greed and stinginess is what you give. We might claim that we are not greedy. We might claim with our utterances that we are not stingy people. But the, 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 the test of what we are saying will be when we are given a moment to give. Now, when you are given a moment to give, the, 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 the true nature of your heart will be, will be revealed. Now, very, very important. Now, those that have overcome greed, those that have overcome selfishness, those that have overcome, you know, holding back, they easily they easily give they easily give now your proof of of, of dealing or the, the the fact that you have overcome greed will be revealed by what you give will be revealed by what you give very very essential foundation as we lay this these this basics we we are we are we are we are we are we are, we are, we are building our case slowly now the proof of your love the proof of your love is not in the words you say the proof of your love is not not in the words you say it is in what you give if you say you love God's people. What are you giving to them? What is the time that you allocate? Now, if I want to see, you know, where your heart is, if I want to see where your heart is, Jesus says that where the man's treasures are, his heart will be there. In other words, where your treasures, where your most valuable things, where your gold, where your time is going, that's when we will know where your heart is. You will never know the heart of a person until you check the trail and the trend of where the treasures are going. In order to know who is who and who loves you and who doesn't love what you're doing, you need to check by the trend of the treasures. The trend of the treasures and the trail of the treasures reveal where this person's heart is. Somebody can say, I'm with you. Somebody can say, I'm behind you. Somebody can say, I'm stuck with you. Somebody can say, you know, I'm, I'm fully supporting you. I'm really, really, really behind you. But the time they allocate to you will reveal it. The resources they allocate to you will reveal it. You know, so, so you cannot hide. Where your treasures are going, your heart is also there. You cannot put your heart, you cannot put your heart here and your treasures goes there. The treasure always follow the heart. That was what Jesus taught us. The treasures always follow the heart. So in other words, in order to understand where the heart of a person is, you've got to check the trail. You've got to check the, you must audit the trail of the, the treasures. Where are the treasures are going? Where are the treasures going? So all these are basic principles that governs giving. All these are basic kingdom principles that governs giving. So it's critical, it's essential for us to understand this. Your proof of the proof of your love is what you give. The proof of your love is what you give. Now when you love, you will find it easy to give. When you say you love someone, you'll find it easier to give them things without being defrauded, without being you know, pushed and forced. We're going to come to that forced giving forced giving means nothing forced forced giving does not 
count. Any gift you do out of force, any gift you give out of being, you know, out of compulsion and force, it will not count and it will not be credited to you as giving because you are giving it out of a grieving heart and out of a complaining heart and you have been forced to do it. So now when you have been forced to give something, that giving does not count. The gift that matters is the gift given out of love. The gift that God will consider is any gift you have done out of love. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. Now, the signature, the certificate and the proof of your love is giving. When you, when we want to see that you live, you love someone, we will check at the signature of love. What is it that you are giving? What is it that you are giving? Not your words. Now, genuine love creates things. Joseph had the coat of many colors created by his father, Jacob. According to the book of Genesis 37, verse 3, the Bible said that, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he, all, he also made him a tunic of many colors. Now, genuine love creates things. Genuine love will create things that can be given to, you know, to the loved ones. Those that you love, you will create things for them. When Jacob loved Joseph, he created the coat of many colors to him. So genuine love is created Genuine love will create time. Genuine love will create moments. Genuine love will create things. Every time where there is love involved, there will be creativity. That's why people who love certain people write songs to them. That's why people who love God write songs about the God they love. That's why when you love God, you will also create music about the God you love. So genuine love creates things. Genuine love is creative. I want to repeat this again. Genuine love is creative. Genuine love is creative. Genuine love is creative. I wanted to repeat that, you know, for, 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 for a period of time so that we can understand and capture what, we, what I'm saying and the points that I'm driving home and the points that I'm pushing home. Now, now, we must also understand that there is also manipulation. Now, we must also understand that manipulation is not mentioned or is not part of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, I must also point out that now anything that we give... You know, you know, against what God stands for or against the standards of God or against the principles of the word of the Lord or against what God is all about. You know, you know, you know, with the intention of getting something else is called manipulation. Manipulation has a way of giving things but without love. I want to say that again. Manipulators can give you things in order to manipulate you to get what they want. So be very discerning as well from time to time who is giving out of love and who is giving out of manipulation. Who is giving with a particular agenda. There are people who can give you things with a particular agenda. So be, 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 you know, be careful with that. But what, 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 what we, what we're talking about between Jacob and, 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 and Joseph is that when Jacob was being given the coat of many colors by his father Joseph, I mean when, when Jacob was, was, has given his son Joseph the coat of many colors. It was not an exercise of manipulation. It was not a transaction of manipulation. So be very careful with transactions that are done for the purposes of manipulating you to dispense certain favors to the manipulators. Be very careful with the kind of things that can be given to you in order for you to dispense certain things in return. Be very careful with those gifts because those gifts are not done out of love but they are done out of manipulation. They're done out of manipulation. So, 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 so what, what 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3 uh, teaches us and John 3, 16 teaches us that, is that whenever, whenever and whatever you give, there must be love. Whenever you give and whatever you give, there must be love. It's the teachings we get from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, chapter 13 verse 3 and also John 3, 16. Very important that whenever giving is involved, whenever giving is involved, there must be love. 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 Now, your giving can easily reveal whether you love something or someone. Can easily reveal can easily reveal that like I told you that the trail will, 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 will reveal the trend. The trail will reveal the trend. So very, very important. Very, very important. So our motivation for giving anything must be love. 
Our motivation for giving anything, time, resources, you know, motiv you know motivation, inspiration, you know, you know, pre presence, you know, all kinds of things that you can give. Your motivation must be love. It must not be, you know, let me give them this so that I can get this in return. There must not be, a kingdom love has no place for kickbacks. Kingdom love has no place for kickbacks, has no place for, you know, what is it that is in for me. That is why we also need to, to address these, 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 uh, this uh, element and act of giving in the church of Jesus Christ with the object, with the, with the, with the intention of receiving something in return all the time. We need to address that, but not today. So the object or, or, or the most important thing that will govern your love, your, your love is what you give. What will govern your giving is love. Love is the seed bed, or love must be the seed bed of all giving. All giving must be done at the seed bed of love. It must be done in the on the seed bed of love. So we 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 shouldn't give things to manipulate people. We shouldn't be giving things to manipulate people. Now I want to finish by a transaction that has happened between Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. First Kings chapter ten. The Bible says that when the Queen of Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon, she drove all the way from Sheba, Ethiopia, drove all the way to come to Zion. And and when she arrived, when she saw the wisdom of Solomon, when she heard the wisdom of Solomon, two things: she saw the wisdom of Solomon and heard the wisdom of Solomon. She was was prompted to give she gave spices she gave gold and other things that you know other valuables that she gave to solomon now what we learn from the queen of sheba and solomon is this is that the anointing that is seen and clearly heard because wisdom is an anointing the anointing that the queen of sheba saw and the anointing that the queen of sheba heard from you know, with regard to Solomon, prompted her to give, prompted her to give, prompted her to give. The queen of Sheba was never forced to give by Solomon. The queen of Sheba was never forced to give by Solomon. It was the grace that was displayed and demonstrated in the environment where Solomon was operating. That when she saw this level of wisdom, when she heard this level of wisdom, something in the air prompted her to give. And not out of force, not out of gimmicks, not out of being you know forced and being defrauded to give certain gifts to King Solomon. Solomon never defrauded this woman. So genuine biblical giving has no place for defrauding each other or defrauding God's people. It is when there is, it is when people start to notice a particular level of grace in your life. It is when people start to see a particular grace manifesting in your life, like in the days of Solomon, that they will then be prompted to give out of love. So the queen of Sheba gave out of love. The, the queen of Sheba gave out of love. So I want to close this first session by saying, your love is is revealed by what you give. Your love is revealed by what you give. Anything that you undertake to give without love counts for nothing. Any gift you will do and you give it without love, it will count for nothing. So when we give, we need to give in the environment of love and out of the heart of love. So genuine Bible giving has no place for forcing people. Genuine Bible giving has no place for, you know, coercing people and pushing them to a corner and manipulating them with certain utterances or even threatening God's people. Let people give out of love. Let people give out of a pure heart. But that is the giving that will count before God. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the law of giving is love and the law of love is giving. When you love God's people, you'll give them something. When I say I love you, I'll give you time. When I say I love you, I love you, I'll give you, you know, you know, resources. When I say I love you, I'll give you prayers. When I say I love you, I will give you things. So it is out of what we give to each other that the love that we have for each other is re revealed, 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 revealed. So genuine love manifests out of the coat of many colors that you will give to a Joseph if you are a Jacob. So very, very important important and very very critical this is some of the basic uh, foundational stuff that i wanted to start with uh, you know you know this 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 afternoon perhaps very quickly in the, in the in the session that is coming just now i need to look at what must we give and where should we give it 
what must we give and where should we give it this is the second session that are, that is coming now i want to reveal and, and teach you about 11 things that you must give and also 15 places where you must give 11 things you must give and 15 locations where different gifts must land at 15 different locations where you need to drop your gifts there are 15 different places according to the scripture where you must give and they are listed i've listed about uh, 11 gifts that you must give and i want to close by saying giving is not limited to money and it must not just be made a money issue because there's more we can give other than money there's more we can give other than money so we are going to get into the second session and and just after these and then we start then to look at these kind of things that we should be giving these you know 11 things that we must give in 15 different places the lord bless you so very much i'll see you just now in jesus name amen